All right, here it is, another episode of Let the Be Talk. Today it is a solo episode starring you, me, yours truly, whatever that all means. It is episode number 690, 10 away from 700. Absolutely insane to me, 700 episodes of Let There Be Talk, all for free. Come on. How are you guys? It is uh, a Monday. And I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada, about to start the 14th show uh, residency here at the Comedy Cellar at the Rio Hotel. So if you are in Las Vegas for the uh, Easter week, Easter's coming up, come join me. Come down for some laughs. Two shows a night, 7 and I think 9.30, Comedy Cellar in Vegas. Good to be here. Going to be working on a bunch of new stuff. I love coming out to uh, Vegas and, you know, trying to uh, try to polish up some of this new stuff. So it'll be a great, uh, great week. And um, yeah, I don't know what you guys are doing for the Easter week, but uh, catch a flight, come out and party. It is uh, two days after April Fool's. So uh, I'm glad that foolish stuff's over. April Fool's. I started thinking about like, how did April Fool's, you know, catch on? What is the history of it? And how come people are still doing it in 2023? You know, what what are you doing? We got the internet. You know, we have uh, cars. (laughs) We have airplanes. And people are still holding on to some old, it's fun. It's fun. Don't be such a downer. It's dumb. How did it fucking start? I didn't even Google to find out how. And I should have, but maybe you guys know, and you can uh, hit me on the Instagram or, or Twitter and tell me how it caught on. April Fool's. (laughs) It's so insane. That one. And the Irish, the Irish day, you're not wearing green. I'm going to fucking pinch you. All that weird shit, which was fun, you know, maybe in the 20s, the roaring 20s or the 30s or the 40s. But we are in 2023, my friends, and people still out there, you know, once in a while, someone pulls off a killer April Fool's, but not not really. I will tell you this, though, on uh, Wednesday afternoon, there was the rumbling rumors of this super desert concert power trip. And if you don't know what that is, you must be sleeping under a fucking rock because anybody a fan of this podcast definitely knows what power trip is. It's out there where they do Coachella done by the same people where they had the big four back in. uh whatever year that was, years ago now, the big four with Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, and Anthrax. And they had old Cheller, remember that? They pulled off that one where it was all the big, big old people bands. I think it was like Dylan Stones and the Eagles or something like that, crazy. But here it is, Power Trip. And so the rumblings were around Wednesday, rumors were dropping that it was this super concert in the desert it was going to be um, uh, Iron Maiden, Guns N' Roses, Ozzy, ACDC, and uh, Metallica and Tool. And I was like, oh, man, this is going to be the greatest April Fool's joke ever. That's all I kept thinking. They're going to have these rumors going, and then they'll they'll drop some kind of... Uh, poster and then on saturday it'll be april fools i'm thinking this is going to be fucking funny because i i'm really good friends with one of the guys that is one of the uh, main dudes of coachella i've known him for 35 years and uh, i thought well wait a minute you know maybe uh you know he would have told me he knows i love acdc and metallica and you know, I, I love the, I love the whole bill. So I text him and he's like, yeah, yeah, man, it's happening. And I was like, well, 
this guy, this particular guy I'm talking about, he is definitely a funny, funny dude and a, a joker. So I was like, I still don't really believe it. But then he sent me over the flyer. And then he sent me over this Beavis and Butthead video. And I was like, well, this would be a pretty intricate um, April Fool's joke. But those are the good ones. Those are the good April Fool's jokes, the super intricate ones that are slow build. And then everybody goes, ah, fuck, you got us. So, uh, you know, it was uh, it, it turned out to be real. And man, what a fucking lineup in October they got out there in the desert. And of course, here comes the fucking Internet. That's it. Here comes the internet with their fucking complaints. I can't believe how much it is. It fucking tickets are bullshit, man. This is bullshit. The prices. It's unreal what people, you know, want. They want everything free. Ever since they stole music. That's why the concerts are how much they are. I keep telling people that over and over. Do you realize you stole the music and now you're going to pay triple for concerts and T-shirts and everything because you stole the music. That's, you know, there's no other revenue. And when you look at the bill, I, I, I ask people, they go, this is fucking outrageous. I'm like, how much did you think it was going to be? What year are you living in? Where are you going out these days? Because I'll tell you what, I open my fucking front door and it's $100. So let me know where you're getting all these fantastic deals in the universe because it does not exist, okay? A movie in Los Angeles, a movie is $20 just for the movie. Not the fucking bullshit red vines that are $9 and the popcorn that's 10 and the Coke that's seven and the parking. Just the movie is $20. So when you look at that bill, just one band is 150 at least, just one band. Uh, and that's like nosebleeds, very back of the rafters if you wanted to see Metallica, you might be able to get a ticket for 150. I don't think you could though. So I just don't understand what universe, what planet people are looking at or living on that see that lineup and not go, holy shit, that is the lineup of the century. That looks like a lineup from 1988 Castle Donington in the UK a Monsters of Rock, one of those back in the day. And people go, well, yeah, back in the day, that ticket would have been $40. Yeah, back in the day, you fucking bought the records. You know, you bought a, a $15, $20 CD, and they sold three, four, five, ten million records, all those bands on that bill, at $15 a CD, the people complain forever. I, I do not understand how you walk around life and just complain. You know, like, you know, it's going to be big money. You see that goddamn lineup. Do you think do you think it's going to be seventy five dollars? Do you live in that kind of fucking world? just for these bands to get out there. And I just did the Marcus King tour and we broke it down with the bus driver, how much it costs just for a bus, just for these bands, just to get out to Coachella is going to be a fortune. Then they got to get their crews out there. They got to get their production out there. They got to get hotels. They got to rehearse. They got to get flights. They got to feed all the people. They got to pay all the people, the lighting, the sound man, the, the techs, everybody, the security, anything. Before they even fucking leave the door, it's probably a million dollars to get out to this, do this show in the right way where they want to make it, you know, insane. And, you know, each band's going to go all out. There's going to be some old school competition they're going to give you the old bullshit of like, this is just, this is just far out, man. 
all of us together. We're just one big family out here in the desert celebrating metal. It's just incredible. But, you know, deep inside, they're like, dude, we got to bring out the fucking submarine. We got to have a flying saucer come off the drum kit. We need to have not just fire, but let's actually have some missiles, some real missiles that we can fire off over to some other wars going on. You know, we get we'll get two things out of the missile. We'll get an, a wow factor and we'll be able to shoot something down. I'm telling you, man, these bands are going to go for it. Each band's playing a full set with full stage. It's not the 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 standard 75 minute festival shit. This is full blown two bands a night going at it. And man, look at that lineup. So I just don't know what planet people are living on where they think that the tickets were going to be, you know, not expensive. Everything's expensive. I'm telling you, man, I can barely do comedy on the road right now because a flight to like Denver that used to be $299 is $800. And uh, every time I go to eat after a show, it's $25. I, I'm not going to fucking Burger King and I'm not eating high roller style. Just everything's fucking crazy. Coffees are five dollars. Gas here in LA is five dollars. Uh, you know, it goes on and on and on. So instead of shitting on it, sit back for a minute and think about what these guys did at Coachella. They put together a dream bill. Now I bet you, I'm willing to bet you. If you were with your buddy and the buddy said, man, what's your dream concert? And he's like, I don't know, man. He's like, what's your dream concert? And the guy goes, how about this? This would be my dream concert. Guns N' Roses, Iron Maiden, ACDC, Ozzy, Metallica, and Tool. And the other guy in the Beavis butthead like, yeah, 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 that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then, and then the other guy, I guarantee we go, dude, I'd pay a million dollars to see that. I'd pay a million dollars to see that. I guarantee that comes out of the guy's mouth. Dude, I'd pay a million dollars to see that fucking bill, man. Oh, fuck. That's a dream bill. It's, it's crazy, man. Instead of just sitting back and thinking what these, these two, three guys, these promoters out at Coachella put together, instead of celebrating it, you just immediately, and I guarantee you this, 90% of the complainers, 90% weren't gonna go anyway. Even if the tickets were $100, they wouldn't go. Cause they'd be like, ah, man, I got fucking, you know, it's all the way out there in the desert. I live in Kansas, you know. Fuck him anyway. That's that that shit's stupid. That fucking stuff's dumb. Cause they're afraid to leave their house, take a flight, find a hotel room, and go enjoy their self. You know, instead they go down and buy the ten dollar pack of cigarettes, sit on the patio. Yeah, fuck those guys. Fucking suck. All those people in California suck at that concert. Fuck them. <laughs> I love it. I love the fucking nutty negativity of these people out there. Just crazy. It's getting worse and worse. Anyway, power trip. It is going to be fucking epic. Not quite sure on that goddamn name, power trip, but uh, holy shit, the lineup. So many questions, too. So many questions. And, and nothing's been really answered or even talked about except the lineup, which gives it that crazy mystique. But who's going to sing for ACDC? Is it going to be Axel or is it going to be uh, Brian Johnson? People right away go, oh, oh, Brian Johnson. I mean, of course. What do you mean, of course? The last time we heard Brian Johnson, you know, they put out the record. But before that, uh, Axel did the last dates. And Brian hasn't really sang in years uh, out live other than a couple spots here and there with Dave Grohl. 
or uh, he sat in uh, with somebody else. I think it was Billy Joel for a song here and there, but you know, we don't know. I don't, I don't know. You know, uh, he had some kind of uh, special hearing stuff, I guess. And so we don't know about that. Also, if you listen to my podcast, the only podcast to have ACDC, thank you. Uh, Cliff Williams, bass player, said, yeah, I'm not going to tour. Now, this is not a tour. We don't know if ACDC is touring or anything. There's no, that's another question. Is it just a one-off? Are they going to play four shows? Cliff Williams said, I'll play like four shows. And uh, so we don't know about that. We don't know what the state of Ozzy is. Last I heard, Ozzy, uh, he's having a hard time with his balance. And, uh, you know, he was not able to tour. I understand that. I thought maybe Ozzy would do like an intern, an intern, an internship out in Vegas. <laughs> A residency, though, where he could just kind of chill in one of those Dave Grohl Axl Rose chairs and just sing some tunes. So we don't know what's going on with Ozzy. And it's a long ways away, man. It's in October. That's a lot of months away. And um, and then the interesting thing to me was uh, GNR and Iron Maiden are playing together. And it looks to me like Iron Maiden's going on first. Now, look, there's no headliners or any of that. But um, they both play the same amount of time. But I, it would be tough to go on after Iron Maiden because those fucking guys bring the goods with airplanes and fires and Eddie and an army full of fans and, uh, and, and hits. They're going to come with some massive number of the beast stuff. You know, they're going to come with a bunch of great stuff live after death style and then i know they're not gonna fuck around because i think there was a beef between the two years ago so interesting a lot of good stuff and then metallica and tool could be one of the greatest bills i've ever seen right there metallica and tool tool in the desert on a good fucking handful of psychedelics could be probably one of the coolest things you would ever see so this is going to be epic and uh holy shit so it's going to be great to see how this unravels over the next three four months any kind of press releases see if acdc kicks something out saying hey man brian's in we're on our 50 year anniversary we're going to do the back in black record if acdc came out and said we're going to do the back in black record i mean just that just that statement would be worth the ticket price alone. Come see us in the desert, play the back in black record. Come on, man. That would be fucking nutty. So I'm fired up about it. And uh, if you aren't, just turn your computer off. You know, everybody's a goddamn critic. I'm not fucking bad. Okay. I had a great week uh, this week of shows. I was out at uh, the Comedy Store, four spots this week. Last night I did Sunday night. The Comedy Store is slowly opening back up on Sunday nights again, which is epic. Uh, Comedy Store is always open 365 days a year. They were never closed until COVID. Then they opened back up. And it was tough to get employees for a while. And it was tough to just kind of get everything running again. Now it's up. It's just been killing it. The comedy store is better than ever. Just all three rooms sold out every night. And a lot of just magic going on in there. And last night was the first night of Sunday nights again. And I got to do the original room. And it just made me uh, remember how great Sundays were because it was really a, just a different vibe when you were working on Sundays at the comedy store. You could go in, really work some new shit. It was really a lot of super comic uh, comedy fans that were in there every Sunday. So I'm glad to see that back. But um, I did a bunch of spots this week. But one thing that was really epic to me was I got a call from Dave Ketching, who is the owner of Rancho de la luna 
That is the infamous Joshua Tree Recording Studio where so many epic records have been made. And you know, Dave Ketching and Brian BOC, Big Hands Connor, O'Connor, Brian O'Connor, um, Big Hands are, um, you know, out there nonstop recording. And they asked me to come out and maybe work on a tune or, or sing something. And now look, I don't do music anymore. And uh, there's a reason why I don't do it because I fucking love doing comedy. And I've said it over and over. I've done music for 25 years and I'm good. I put that away. Rollins was talking about it recently and I could relate to him. And I wasn't ever even at a level of Rollins. So, you know, in life, Sometimes you find something later in life that you love. And uh, so I, uh, I, 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 I just don't ever have that itch at all. All I think about is comedy every day. So they call me and they said, you want to come out? And this group of people, immediately I said yes. Because first of all, I grew up listening to all the great desert music. Of course, Caius and, and later Josh with Queens of the Stone Age and, and what he turned that fucking just behemoth into. And, and Dave and, you know, Eagles of Death Metal and everything in that studio and uh, Sonic Highways, that whole cool episode of Grohl out there. And then... My favorite episode ever of No Reservations with Bourdain and Josh driving through the desert in that T-Bird and then ending up at Rancho and just recording and hanging out. It's got this fucking energy that I love. And uh, so they gave, they gave me a call. They said, will you come out? And I said, absolutely. And they said, oh, uh, Brad Wilk's going to play drums head explodes right away. One of my favorite humans. I absolutely love Brad and Rage being a top 10 band of all time to me. And, and Brad's playing is insane. Then Dave on guitar, Brian on fucking bass and me in the uh, little tracking room. We're just working up, trying to find some magic. And immediately it starts happening. And I realize. Oh, this room has magic. And that is the bottom line. And it is unreal how we were just in there and in a matter of like 40 minutes or 50 minutes, we had a tune going. And it was one of the greatest days I've had in a long time, other than uh, opening for Burr at Red Rocks or LA Forum or the Bon Scott bash, the last one, those are like high fucking high, high watermarks to me. And this just slid right in there. It's like day on the greens, us festival, opening for Burr at Red Rocks, opening for Burr at the forum two times. Um, and then, you know, the Bon Scott bash, the last one, and then this, <laughs> those are like, those are just fucking mind boggling memories in my head. And it just meant so much to me to be out there and be part of that. It's basically the 30 year anniversary of the studio. And they're putting out a, a maybe a double record or whatever vinyl uh, with all these different people coming together and writing and tracking songs. and and going to put it out and they're not full bands. They're just people like, you know, me like piece together and find some creative energy and put some shit out and celebrate everybody that had worked in there. And I got to tell you, man, it was just a, it was just an incredible day out there all day. And then the end of the afternoon, we went to some secret taco shop in the back of a grocery store that I have never been in, in Yucca. And I'm out there all the time. Didn't even know about it. They serve breakfast burritos at night, which is always my favorite. 
A breakfast burrito at night is my jam. And um, and we sat around and talked life and had laughs. And I realized, you know, if those guys said, hey, man, you want to make a record, a whole record, I would do it just for the fucking memories and the and the feel goods, the feel goods. I would do it for the feel goods. Anyway. So I don't know if it's going to my track will ever get finished or come out or whatever. It, it's not even about that at all. It was just about taking a day off out in the desert and, and going in and recording. And it was interesting to me because I hadn't used that muscle of songwriting in a long time. And it came right back instantly. And that's from doing something for 25 years. Like, you know, I want to get to a level in comedy where I'm, I'm, I'm okay right now at finding the bits. And, and, but then it takes me a while to get them working and rocking, you know, months and months of, of creating it. But I want to get to a level in comedy. This is what I'm looking forward to getting to. At the same level I am at music, as far as writing process, uh, you know, being able to hear a groove and gears start instantly turning of like, oh yeah, this would be a good mel mel melody. This would be a good melody. This would be a good melody over this part right here. Is it a verse or am I feeling a chorus here? Maybe we move this over here and make that the verse and this will be the chorus. Just flipping stuff around, hearing it, shouting out melodies, coming up with key little lyrics here and there real fast, real fast. And a lot of my jokes come like that magically. And But then with jokes, you got to sit down and and expand on it. Where music, you know, you got a verse and then you got a chorus and you got a verse, then you got a bridge and then you got a chorus. You know, you can pretty much uh, figure that out once you get rolling. But with jokes, you can have a two minute thing and later in a few months, it could become 10 minutes. And how fast that becomes 10 minutes is the difference between someone like me and the big level dudes like a Burr or a, uh, say, uh, Norm MacDonald, you know, where it, 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 the joke you think is this, it's really about this, but no, it's not. It, 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 it comes around, it's a full circle, the joke, you know? It's not just the surface of what you think it is. Like the little throwaway fun thing I had of Cocaine Bear. You think it's just about the movie, but no, it's not. It's about three other things. So that's the uh, the thing I'm looking forward to getting to in comedy that I can seem to do with uh, music. Now, look, I'm not saying it was a hit song or anything. What I'm saying is how fast I can kind of hear it and start working on it. So looking forward to that phase uh to get to that level in comedy, which would be really cool. Um, anyway, thank you, Rancho and the Rancho family, Brad, Dave, Brian, and, uh, you know, oh, I wanted to give a shout out to the fucking engineer slash producer out there. This is what I want to tell you guys. So there is a thing in um, the recording studio that happened 30 years ago or so, which was uh, Pro Tools. I don't know when it first came out, but when Pro Tools first came out, Pro Tools, what it is, is it's the way that everybody records now on the computer. Um, you know, you grid up tracks, you don't use tape. And uh, I've been talking about how great Pro Tools is now. Like if you listen to all this new Metallica, it just sounds so fucking good, man. And old days, Pro Tools was flat. Digital recording was kind of, eh, it was kind of funky. But you did it because it was cheaper and it was convenient. You could record in your house or uh, in your rehearsal studio or whatever. 
But there was a dude, now let me see if I can find this. Here it is. That was working um, on the, uh, he was on the desk. He was on the desk. That's what some people call the uh, mixing board. I was over on the desk mixing up some tones, mate. And uh, some people call it the uh, uh, the table. He was on the table. This guy, Paul Frazier. And uh, he's from Europe. And I got to tell you, other than Jakir King, who I had on the podcast, who is, uh, and you want to Paul, uh, follow Paul Frazier, his uh, Instagram is Space Music Producer. But other than Jakir King, I had never seen a guy this fucking good in the studio, not in your fucking hair, not in your ear, just understanding. I'm like, dude, maybe fly this right here and then cut this and repeat it like three times without even sitting there going over it with him. I would turn around, sip my Topo Chico and he would be playing it and it would be fucking perfect. This guy is a wizard. And I tell you what, when you get a guy like that in the studio that does not slow down the creative process, you are going to have a killer record because there's nothing more that kills a creative process than a guy that doesn't know what he's doing on the fucking, on the desk, on the buttons, on the computer. Because you'll be like, Hey man, can you uh, maybe fly in that vocal? Now this is all te technical terms, you know. Like, can you fly in that vocal and maybe drop it over here? And then the guy goes, "Huh?" And you got some intern, and he's over there trying to fucking figure it out. And you're just going like, "I'll be outside for a minute." And you come back in twenty minutes later, he still doesn't even know what the fuck's. Is this what you took? Over creativity over but when you got a guy like this guy paul frazier i've never heard of him i go what have you done he's like huh, everything let's see what he has done actually because i didn't really google him or anything because i just knew how fucking good he was that he had to um let's see producer let's see producer Let's see here, Paul Frazier. Ah, uh, motherfucker. Uh, here it is. Oh my God, I found it. Okay. Space is a British recording artist composer. Oh, wow. His pseudonym is Space. Oh, yeah. I feel like an idiot, too. Like, I didn't know anything about this guy. But, I mean, I can't know everybody. He's 40. His birthday's three days after mine. Wow. Okay, space list of projects include work with the uh, oh oh with idols. What a fucking band! That's right. He told me he worked with idols, which is uh unbelievable band. Never not nothing. The prodigy, of course, he worked with the prodigy because that's how fucking good he is with the computers. Do nothing and Jamie Lindman, as well as the score for 2020 film The Owners. I'm, I'm telling you, man, this guy, I'm looking at his discovery, and uh, it is deep. Idol's EP, Meet, which is a great fucking EP. Um, anyway, The Prodigy, The Day is My Enemy, 2015. Anyway, my point is the guy, need. I needed to shout him out because I just couldn't believe how great he was god man it was an it was just an honor to work with those guys out there i mean brad wilk oh my god anyway so uh which oh by the way i wanted to bring up this uh this new band that i heard or i don't know if it's a band or a person but eve's tumor and it is unbelievable the uh, song that I really love is uh, Heaven Surrounds Us Like a Hood. And the record is called 
praise a Lord who chews, but which does not consume. Eve's tumor, Y V E S, and then tumor, T U M O R. Record came out in 2023. It is fucking great. Um, artist born Sean Bowie has a gift of presenting sounds we know in ways we don't. So while the surface of praise of Lord Eve's tumor's fifth record, holy shit, might remind you of late 90s, early 2000s electro rock, the album's twisting songs, but structures and restless detail are phenomenal. I'll tell you what. So give it a spin, man. Eve's tumor. It is it. it it just blew my, somebody sent it over to me and they said, Hey, this is next level. When somebody says that, I'm like, all right, let's see what you think's next level. And it was, uh, he sent me the video on YouTube and it's fucking great. So I'm looking forward to digging into that while I'm out here in Vegas, listening to some records, catching up on some, uh, movies and writing some jokes, my, uh, Vegas thing, you know? Uh, next up here, what do we have, my friends? Um, oh, oh, I wanted to give you guys this shout out. We, um, did the watch episode last week, uh, Kevin Christie and I, and it was the watches and wonders. And if you haven't heard the episode or if you don't give a fuck about watches, I get it. Okay. But watches and wonders is the big show where Rolex and the big brands show off their new watches for the year. And we covered pretty much everything we loved on it. Well, this year, Rolex did something that I thought was an April Fool's move also. And they've never done this before. At the end of the week, the show is a week long, they dropped one last watch just to fuck everybody up. And this is the 60-year anniversary of the greatest uh, Rolex ever made, the, the, the Daytona, the, 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 the Daytona. So at the end of the week, they dropped a Daytona and it's, uh, it was, it's, uh, first of all, I've never even heard of this from Rolex and I am a deep uh, watch guy. And so is Kevin Christie. And so is a lot of my friends. I've never heard of this, but anyway, at the end of the week, Daytona dropped a rare uh, Rolex dropped a rare Daytona gem set. And uh, this is what they said. On the last day of Watches and Wonders, we reveal one of the year's most surprising releases. The new Daytona is part of Rolex's off-catalog 2023 collection. This is incredible. Because basically what they're going to be doing is... You got your standard Rolexes that are already hard to get, but they're on the website. This is what we offer. And then they're going to offer some off catalog custom shit for the Super Ballers, which is wise, man, because these people get bored with just a regular Rolex. If you're LeBron James, you're like, man, I have Rolex, you know, fuck, I got them all. Who cares? But they got an off-catalog collection for the most exclusive models reserved for brands VIP clients. So this Daytona is it's basically all rubies and diamonds, and it, it is insane. And it's called uh it's uh four hundred and forty thousand dollars. <laughs> You have to be a serious baller. And I bet there's a line. I bet there's a line right now for one. People are like, immediately, someone like Jay-Z. Jay-Z wears a, a million-dollar watch all the time. He goes down to the fucking basketball games wearing a million-dollar watch. That is a full fuck you. I am crazy rich. This is a million-dollar watch. And I drove here in my $5 million Bentley. <laughs> anyway, unreal, man. So I wanted to just to uh, throw that out because Rolex has never done anything like that. At the end of the week, uh, put out a, a custom watch for some off catalog shit. That is just rad to me. 
Uh, let's give a quick shout out real quick to some new Patreoners. Dan Badrock. Thank you. Emily Thorner is back. She is a long time uh, Dell Razor and friend, and she has joined back on. She's busting her ass out there going to college in some cold city. Fortune Farms. Thank you so much. And um, that's it for the new Patreoners. But if you want to join the Patreon, it's patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. I also want to do a read off the uh, uh, an ad right now. We have the sponsor has returned. Hello, Fresh. You fucking are going to eat healthy and you're going to get a deal right here, people. Hello, Fresh. Use the code Hello Fresh dot com let me get the code for it just so i don't fuck this up hellofresh.com slash delray 50 5 0 delray 50 that's d-e-l-r-a-y 50 now i want you to get the code because people go what was the code again so i said it a bunch of times hellofresh.com slash delray 50 now I've been messing with HelloFresh. I'm always trying to eat healthy. Uh, I don't have time to go to the grocery store. This is way better of a deal anyway. I get groceries. They always go bad. I'm on the road. HelloFresh is working for me. Okay? With the cost of groceries going up and up, now is the perfect time to get started with HelloFresh. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. I'm telling you, not only that, but what they don't mention here is how good it is. I mean, the food is perfect. Powering up with protein is easier than ever with HelloFresh. Just check for the protein smart tag. That's the one I do because I, I like to have a lot of protein and, and not a bunch of uh, sugar and all that stuff. Featuring 30 grams or more of protein, like one pot pork and black bean chili, which is absolutely my favorite. Creamy Dijon dill chicken. I'm telling you, hello fresh, and it's a great deal. Okay. Here's what you're going to get. All right. Check it out. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients, seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make more cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit, which it is, man. All right? I'm using it. I'm telling you. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Delray50 and use the code Delray50 for uh, 50% off and free shipping. All right? Free shipping. Go do it. It helps the podcast big time. And it helps you. It helps your pocketbook. It helps your health. One other uh, sponsor, MigosDog.com. Migos Dog is the cleanest dog food on the planet. Don't feed your dog a bunch of garbage. Okay? That kibble from China, no good. It's got sawdust in it. It's got chemicals. It's got whatever they feel like throwing in there. And your poor dog is trying to deal with it. And you love your dog. You want your dog to live many, many, many years. Don't feed it garbage. MigosDog.com right now will deliver to your house if you live in Los Angeles. Or you can buy it at HelloFresh or Erwan Markets. All right? MigosDog.com or follow them on Instagram. Tell them I sent you. They got salmon. They got uh, chicken. They have uh, duck. And they got a beef coming out. So MigosDog.com and hit them up. They got all kinds of deals going all the time. Sign your email up and get emailed uh, deals. Great. Gertie loves it. She's on the salmon. She's back on the salmon. She was on the beef for a while. Then she's like, nah, I want a little duck. And now she's like, eh, take me back. It's salmon season. <laughs> anyway, those are the sponsors today. And uh, I appreciate the sponsors. They really help out. All right. Let's get back into the show, people. Let's get back into the show. Um, what, uh, what else I want to talk about here? Oh, yes. I saw the Clyde Davis documentary. I've been, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm real late 
to the game because I don't have a lot of time to watch stuff. So what happened was I was going on to watch the um, the U2 documentary on Disney Plus. And whosoever Disney Plus code I was using, it no longer worked. So I was fired up. Here I am. It was a Tuesday night. I'm at home. I go, all right, I want to watch the U2 doc. I love U2. I'm not one of those people that trash U2. I think they're one of the greatest bands ever. Octung Baby, still one of the greatest tours I've ever seen and one of the greatest records ever made. So I'm ready to watch this. They've got this new record out where they're reinterpreting some of their biggest hits. It's fantastic. I'm ready to watch it. Letterman's on it. Code doesn't work. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. So now I'm ready. I want to watch something. So I go, fuck it. Let's go over to Netflix here. I use some other code, uh, some other friend's code. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm skimming through the documentaries. And I was going to watch the David Geffen one. And I thought that's what I pressed. And it turned out it was the Clive Davis talk. Now, Clive Davis and uh, David Geffen, and uh, there's, there's only like four or five of these people in the record business that are actual. What, what's the other guy? Amit, the guy that signed Zeppelin from uh, Atlantic Records. These guys are true fucking geniuses, all right? They believed in art. They believed in good music. They believed in supporting the artists, whether it be fucking Zeppelin or Springsteen or somebody seeing U2 or even Eve's fucking the, the, new, the new shit I'm listening to. Anyway. It's amazing to watch this Clive Davis documentary. His story is so unbelievable. I love when I see people's stories and you're like, what? What the fuck? This guy basically was going to law school and gets out of law school and, you know, this big fucking Sony columbia all that they want him to run the fender guitar musical instrument department and he's like yeah i don't really know much about that you know and they're like okay they give it to somebody else and they go okay well what we want you to do then is uh you know come in be the lawyer here and then all of a sudden they just make him like the head of a and r like, yeah, you know, uh, scout out some music. And, and the fucking shit this guy signed, not ever, ever being in the record business. Ever. I mean, look at this, dude. Springsteen, okay? Springsteen. You know, that's back on the first two records, you know. You have to really hear... You know, I mean, everybody was thinking, oh, this is the new Dylan. But those first two records, you know, Blinded by the Light and all that, the, the jazzy lineups, which I fucking love, Greetings, the first two Springsteen records, you know, they're they're crazy good. But you, you if you hear that, you're not going like, mmm, big hits. These are going to be big hits. It wasn't about that. He's just like, this guy's a goddamn artist. Let's sign him. Okay. Springsteen doesn't sell any records. They're getting ready to shit can him. If you saw the, the documentary, uh, you know, uh, Born to Run, if that didn't hit, he was gone. So look, he does Springsteen. Then he signs Santana uh, late in Santana's career when people are like, what are you doing signing Santana? And then he does that supernatural record. He goes, well, I'm going to get Santana. I'm going to put them together with other people. And that record sells like 50 million or 30 million records. This guy was on and on and on. He gets, uh, after his first run a little while, he gets caught up in this, uh, this phony payola lawsuit scheme and he loses everything. It's unbelievable. 
They shit can him. He's out, and and he had nothing. They had nothing on him. And even Rolling Stone did a story like, "Hey, it turned out this is a bogus fucking scam." You know, there's no payola going on here. There's no proof. And the judge, the main judge, was like, "This is all bullshit." And this is just how you get fucking gappled in life by bullshit. You know, somebody says this, and then other people are like. And they just like, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, payola. And then when he comes off innocent, it's in the deep, deep, deep back pages of the New York Times. Uh, it turns out Clive Davis didn't have anything to do with the payola uh, way back after the obituaries. Anyway, this guy signed Janice Joplin. This is how it all starts. He gets the job. He goes up to Monterey Pop. He doesn't even know anything about the record business. He doesn't know anything about hippie music, anything. They're playing fucking uh, Sony, Columbia. They're signing like polka acts and shit like that. He goes, smokes a couple joints, sees Janice. It changes his fucking life. Signs her and the rest is history. I'm telling you, you got to see this goddamn fucking documentary. Earth, Wind, and Fire. I love this guy. He's like, in the middle of the 70s, we got to get into some R&B and soul music. Earth, Wind, and Fire. All right? And then he, he, he's, got, he's at Arista after the Sony thing. I know this is kind of fucking all over the board, but I'm just kind of remembering it. And it was just so good. But he's at Arista and he's like, he got this track record killing it. And they're like the old ageism. They're like, mm, he's about 66. We got to get rid of him. And he's doing nothing but killing it. Alicia Keys, Whitney Houston. What? And then he fucking gets J Records going. And they have huge hits with fucking Puff Daddy and all hip hop and all that world. It's unbelievable. This guy's still out there killing it. So go see the Clive Davis doc, man. Oh, you guys are all like, hey man, we saw that like three years ago. <laughs> I know, I'm one of those dicks. I seen it so late. It's like Breaking Bad. I didn't, I didn't start watching it until the third season. And then I was like, you guys watching Breaking Bad? They're like, fuck you talking about yeah dude we've been watching it so oh my god man uh check that shit out anyway um i hope you guys can make it out to vegas if not i will be in uh texas with bill burr uh texas a and m at an arena out there uh april i think 14th yeah that's what it is also, Santa Rosa just got put up on the uh, gig list. I mean, Santa Rosa in June, I believe. All the uh, shows are on my website, deandelray.com. And the merch is up there, too. And remember, the most important thing is, I do this podcast hoping you love it, but also hoping that you'll come out to some live comedy shows and and uh, and enjoy it, you know? I will... Uh, be uh, seeing you guys out there. Patreoners, I'll see you this week on a Zoom. I will do a live Zoom from uh, Vegas for the Patreoners. And I will also um, do a bonus episode for you guys. So that'll be fun too. Candles are definitely lit here. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Have a great Easter, whatever you celebrate this week. Whatever it is, it's all good. I'm going to go out and drive some cars out at the Dream Race track this week. Hopefully, I'll get to drive the new GT3 uh, Porsche. Dream. Dream to drive that. So, I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for tuning in. And, uh, oh, don't forget, I'm going to ask you this one thing to do. I ask you to do things because I put the podcast out for you. You can do something for me. Go to my Instagram and share all of the comedy clips in your stories. It takes about one second. Just share them in your stories and say, hey, follow Dean Del Rey, check out his comedy. It takes one second. Just share to your stories and also 
share them on your Twitter, your Facebook, whatever. Let's get these comedy clips out. I got a lot of clips going up and uh, I really like this comedy I'm doing right now. I'm pretty proud of it. It's funny. I just watched a show from 2017 and I used to think I was pretty good back then. Oh man, I watched it. I was like, whoa. Yeah, the people were laughing, but uh, it, it wasn't to me. I'm glad that I watched it and it, I'm glad I didn't watch it and go, ooh, I was better back then. That would have been horrible. Ooh, I was better back then. I watched it and I was like, ooh, all right. There's probably like two clips that I could cut out of the hour and post them up. I'm going to post them up this week. But, oh, man, it was just, it was great to feel uh, a little cringed on it. You know, people are like, how come you don't have a special out? Man, I'm glad that thing wasn't out. At the time, I thought it was the greatest and uh, right now, I truly believe in this comedy that I'm doing. That's why I'm putting it up, you know? Uh, so anyway, share it and uh, keep the candles lit. Hope you guys are good. Thank you for tuning in to episode number 600 and what is it? 80, right? Was that 680? I can't remember. I love you guys. See ya.